Hi everyone, this is a demo of the COVID-19 case tracking application. This app was built using the open source platform ComCare and is available to be freely used and adapted. This template app is built on the World Health Organization's first few X cases investigation protocols. This protocol walks frontline health workers through the following activities. It then collects information about these cases, including demographic information, clinical information, symptoms, healthcare interactions, and lab results. It then follows up with confirmed cases 14 to 21 days later to record progression of their symptoms as well as final outcomes. It then registers close contacts of confirmed cases, including their demographic information, clinical information, lab test results, as well as follow-up activities. I will walk you through the process of registering and following up with a confirmed COVID-19 case, as well as registering one of their contacts. You can also use this app to confirm suspected COVID-19 cases, but for the sake of time, I will be skipping this step in this demonstration. This template app is built in ComCare. I'm first going to log in. This is the app's home screen. Here is where I can register a confirmed or suspected COVID-19 case. Here is where I can view my registered suspected COVID-19 cases. And this is where I can see my confirmed cases. This is where I can see any contacts I've registered. I will walk through the process starting with registering my confirmed case. It's going to ask for consent first, then an option to manually enter a unique ID or automatically generate a unique ID. In this case, I'm going to generate one. I'm going to register Jane Doe as a confirmed case. This screen informs you you can find Jane Doe in the confirmed cases menu and proceed to form A1. So that was the registration. I'm now going to the confirmed COVID-19 cases menu. I will then find Jane Doe here. This is where the full list of any cases registered will appear. As you can see, I have demo one surname appearing alongside Jane Doe in this list. I'm then going to select Jane Doe. You can view the patient identifier information that was registered, current status, and status of form completion which is blank now because we haven't filled out any additional forms. So the first step is filling out form A1, which is the initial reporting form. I'm going to move through this quickly just to show you the content that's available here. This form and content is intended to be adaptable by organizations involved in COVID-19 response. As you can see right now, it's collecting the patient demographic information. It's asking about the treating physician details, any symptoms that the patient has had. Let's say the onset was yesterday. And then it goes through and asks about the core symptoms. Any visits to facilities, respiratory symptoms, and then any other symptoms. Let's say this patient is experiencing headache and joint ache. Again, I'm going to continue skipping through so you have a sense of all the content in the form. As you can see, it is exactly mirroring the content that is in the WHO form available in the protocol if you would like to review that. Again, this can be adapted to your needs if you would like to remove any content or adapt it. It's asking about any complications any pre-existing conditions that the patient might have, and any healthcare interactions. Any exposure before symptoms, including any travel domestically or internationally, any contact with a suspected or confirmed case, and more details about their exposure. And then for every form, it'll ask if it is completed, and then yes, no, or partially. And now when we go back, I can find my confirmed case. You can see now that day since A1 form has been completed now has a zero since we have filled that out. This is to help the healthcare worker know when 14 days have passed and they need to return and complete form A2, which is the case follow-up reporting form. 
I'm now going to show you the process for recording secondary bacterial infections. This is the same as recording virology testing methods and results, and recording serology testing methods and results. The idea here is that there might be one or several tests conducted. So you're able to come in and set the date of the sample, the type of sample, and the outcome. I can then go to the confirmed COVID-19 case list, select my confirmed case, and I can view the secondary bacterial test results here that I've recorded. I can find the sputum sample, the date of it, and then the positive results that came from it. Many of these can be filled out, and they can also be filled out for virology and serology test results. I'm going to now go through the process of filling out form B1, which is the contact initial reporting form. This is just asking for consent, as in form A1. This page lets you know that once you fill this form out, this contact will appear in the contacts menu, and you will be ready to complete form B2 when you are ready to follow up with them. I'm going to skip through these questions quickly. As you can see, it's asking questions about the data collector, whether or not anyone is providing details on their behalf, and now asking information about their contact. This is going to be John Doe. This also gathers contact details, including exposure information. You may recognize these questions from the A1 form. And then it asks about any symptoms they are experiencing. As you can see, this follows the pattern of the previous A1 form. Now that we filled out the B1 form and registered a contact, I can find them here in the contacts case list. First, I will see the related COVID-19 case. In this case, Jane Doe. Once I select that, I will see the list of contacts that are associated with Jane. So far, it's only John. I can see here the patient name associated is Jane Doe and that it has been zero days since I completed the B1 form. Again, that is to help the healthcare worker plan when they need to follow up 14 days later. This is the form B2. This looks quite similar to the form A2, that is, follow up conducted on a confirmed case. As you can see, it's also possible to conduct virology and serology tests and then review those test results. So in 14 days, we will follow up with this contact along with the confirmed case here. So a few last reminders. First, that this content is strictly adherent to the World Health Organization protocols. Organizations can modify all application content using ComCare's Turnkey Application Builder. And you can view additional documentation and instructions on how to download a copy of this application. To do this, visit compcarehq.org slash COVID-19.